safe streets, vibrant neighborhoods, successful business and commerce. These are things that make a healthy community. We are a diverse community, rural, suburban, urban, a multitude of languages and ethnicities, ages and experiences. We are a collaborative community. Public-private partnerships make us a model community that others want to follow. It is what makes us unique. It is what makes us strong. The employees of Kent County reflect our diversity and seek to serve our communities. People in this county, in this area, we wrap our arms around each other. We come together to collaborate, to solve problems. Um, we're all working for the good of the whole. And I think that's wonderful. And you can see it. You can see it as you drive around Kent County. Our impact starts the day a baby is born and a birth certificate is issued, to protecting children from deadly diseases through vaccination, to the public safety and justice provided by law enforcement and the courts, to offering veterans services and caring for the elderly. Every day we work to keep our communities robust. I think if you are somebody who is interested in serving your community, in building a strong knowledge base and a good group of people to work with, then the county is one of your best employment opportunities out there. It's been completely rewarding in every way I could possibly explain for 26 years and I feel like I grow every single day still today. Leading these dedicated employees are 19 member Board of Commissioners and our County Administrator Controller, along with our elected officials and appointed department directors, placing emphasis on civic involvement, quality housing, vibrant neighborhoods, and strong, solid infrastructure to allow businesses to thrive. Professional, dedicated, collaborative, and innovative. Behind the scenes, collaboration between foundations, charitable organizations, nonprofits, for-profit businesses, public sector demonstrated through the county, the city of Grand Rapids, the townships, all the cities and the villages in our area. If we don't come together, then we will not have the strength that we have today, and I only hope to build upon that. Our aim is to make our communities the best they can be. We are involved in exciting development projects, sustainable recycling programs, and creative progressive prevention programming. We partner with elected officials, impacting policy ideas that become great achievements. We seek opportunities to reach out into the community and offer our services to help our residents make Kent County thrive. Our relationship um, is solid, um, both from a staff standpoint at the county level, as well as the Board of Commissioners. And um, they understand what we do and the benefits that we can do for the community. And vice versa, we couldn't do what we do without the help of Kent County. While most of us are busy running our lives, Kent County's elected officials, administrator controller, and over 1,600 employees are serving the communities where we live our lives, so we can all have a place we are proud to call home. Kent County, it's life well run. Now it's on, never mind. We'll do it one more time. How's that sound? It is May 21st, it is 8.30 a.m. and it is my pleasure to welcome everyone to the Finance and Physical Resources Committee meeting. Thank you fellow commissioners, guests, and other colleagues who come to this meeting. We appreciate the time out of your day to attend. We know there are other pressing matters in your life and we really like the fact that you're here. So with that being said, I will open to public comment. Is there any public that would like to address the Finance and Physical Resources Committee this morning? Seeing none, I will close public comment. That brings us to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. moved and supported. And anything have to be pulled? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. That brings us to item number three from the administrator's mm -hmm. office. Wayman. Yes, this is a request to approve the following list of guidelines to be used in the preparation of the 2020 county budget. County administrator controller is directed to present a general fund budget for the 2020 fiscal year that is structurally balanced and to establish the appropriate budget targets to achieve the goals laid out in the board's strategic plan. Unless properly justified, no growth budgets will be used for contractual services and commodities with the exception of departmental budgets that receive state or federal funding or contractual services that changed based upon external causes and not internal spending controls. Unless, proper, 
I'm sorry. Zero base budgeting will be utilized for all line items so that each department should assume the, the account rolls back to zero at year end and they will need to build, rebuild and rationale for all expenditures within that line item. Specific accounts affected include but are not limited to consultants, travel regular and travel conference, or their contractual services, training and education and dues and memberships. The moratorium on new positions requiring, requiring uh, a general fund appropriation instituted for the 2004 through 2019 budget shall be extended for the 2020 budget. If, however, the addition of new positions result in a reduction in the general fund appropriation for the requesting department or is deemed necessary to achieve board approved initiatives, consideration may be given to adding the position. According to the capital improvement Program policy, a minimum of 0.20 mills of the general property tax levy will be set aside for capital improvements for the 2020 budget. Okay, is there a motion to approve? So moved. <coughs> moved and supported. Questions, comments, and discussion? Yes, Commissioner Morgan. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, do I need to? Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this looks pretty familiar. It looks like uh, these are pretty much the same parameters we've been using in the past. I did want to bring up, um, <coughs> we have uh, 0 0.20 mills for capital improvement. Um, in the past, we've kind of uh, exercised that up. Um, is there any uh, consideration of doing that this if year? We have not started the process yet, but there's, there's a good potential that based on where we're headed uh, this year, there could be a potential that we would come back and, and exercise that again this year. Okay, yeah, I've always been a long proponent of taking care of our infrastructure, and this is one of the key ways we yeah, do Yeah, that, that process so. will begin in a few weeks, and the departments have already received the call letter to uh, ask them to provide uh, their projects, so the team that will be looking at that, of course, will will bring that back to the board. There will be work sessions that will be held um, to review those with the board and uh, to make sure that we are identifying uh, the really important projects to keep us moving forward long-term as well as short-term. And the work sessions are not on the schedule, correct? No, not yet. Okay. No, they're not. And we'll have to work through that with you, the chair, and, and the, the board chair. Perfect. Commissioner Antor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, two things that I really like about this is, is you know, two phrases, zero-based budgeting and structurally balanced budgeting. Not, not everybody does that. As a matter of fact, I, I would bet that most people don't. Um, and that's why there's so many government agencies that are upside down because they don't follow this model. And it's so important that we do that because we're spending the people's money and, uh, you know, it's not ours really. And we have to take care of it. And I, I love this, that we, we achieve this every year. We're in a, fortunately, we're in a good position to be able to do that compared to some municipalities around the state. So, yes, we're in a good position to do that. Okay. Anyone else? Commissioner Wooden. Thank you. I pulled Commissioner Morgan and uh, forgot to put, press my button. Um, I just had a quick question. So um, this, the moratorium on new positions requiring a GF appropriation was started in 2004. Um, during the kind of early stages of the, the Great Recession in Michigan, and it's, it's re remained. What was the rationale for keeping it this long? Well, based on what we experienced, there were like 200 positions that we had to reduce during that period of time. Um, we feel that we want to hold the line to ensure that we're not in that same predicament that we were before. So departments will have to justify the need to add those positions because we will probably see another recession um, in year two, in, in two years, three years, we don't know when. But it's very difficult to reduce when you've created programs that the public's dependent upon. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Commissioner Voorhees. Thank you, Chair Jones. Um, how many uh, additional FTEs, full-time employees, do we have in this budget over against 2018 budget? Well, the budget hasn't been recommended for this year, 2020. Currently, there's 1,700, approximately 1,700 employees that we have to in total for 2019. So the number of FTEs, um, what's the increase? Well, we haven't determined yet for 2020 no. that we're working No, on. we have not. 2019 over 2018, do we have that number? 
available. I think we have it on that card, and I left that. Uh, I don't have that hand. with me. Uh, the the number that we have for 2019 yeah. budget is 1774.47 FTE. Um, I can get you the number for 2018. Yeah, I, I, I just uh, have concern as we, uh, I know we've had this this uh, uh, policy about, uh, but we've always seemed to have that need and keep increasing it, but just uh, concern about the commitment of the full-time. Somebody has that card? This is 18. There's 18. We, we share your concerns, uh, Commissioner. And uh, we, we have a process by which we've asked departments to provide us um, their rationale. There's a criteria that we're looking at. So it's a very arduous process that anyone will have to go through to add positions going forward. So that's, that's the way we want to run it. And it's a good health, it's a healthy exercise for the department as well. In some cases, we'll, um, in fact, utilize the team to go in and assess the department's uh, operation to determine whether or not um, there are things that we could do, whether it be uh, combining resources or doing cross-functional uh, arrangements to mitigate the need to add people. So we're c consciously avoiding adding people where we, when we have to, uh, r rather than putting them in a position where we have to cut some down, time down the road. Good. I share I, your sentiments. Yeah, I, you, you know my, my concern on uh, dollars being used um, for the benefit of the taxpayer. Um, and so we don't want to miss where, there, where the necessity is. But <coughs> I don't know with the policy we have uh, had for this many years, as long as it is, is making it a more stringent exercise so that we know that it's the right thing, then I, I'm with it. Thank yes, you. and that we do have a very stringent process that we have uplifted this year. Last year, there were 1,687. In 18, 1687, uh, we added a few people in, in the uh, sheriff's department. You might remember uh, health department. We've added a few. Um, so we are continuing to hold a line, even though we see re uh, the revenues going up, to mitigate any future needs to reduce uh, layoff people. Thank you. Hey, anyone else? Yes, Commissioner Bukowski. Welcome. Um, sorry, I'll, I'll explain to miscellaneous where I was. Um, the, uh, did you talk about um, the excess revenue at all? I mean, I don't want to duplicate if you made a presentation and I have to go back and watch it. Uh, I mean, the main, I'll just ask it, sorry. Um, the main question I have is, you know, with the zoo millage of a few years ago, increasing taxes, and I know there's the increase in cost of doing business, and that's just rolling forward, and some commitments we made to, um, uh, you know, continue to pay down the the uh, retiree health. I mean, we have a very small liability compared to our colleagues. However, um, it's still real. All that being said, is you know where where is the bullet point to really talk about? the intentionality of those dollars and how much that really is and how do we prioritize it. You know, um, reading the executive committee um, uh, minutes, there's some significant um, items coming our way on the capital side of yes. life. Um, so so what, when do we like try to identify a some certain in that pot and and really be <clears throat> intentional as opposed to you know, again, in a $360 million budget, a couple million dollars can just kind of evaporate. Right. We have waylaid, we've delayed the additional infrastructure improvements over the past 10 years or so, as you might remember. We've delayed several significant projects that we could have put on the table. We just didn't have the dollars on the table to, to make it happen. So that's really critical for us. We've delayed a lot of improvements, a lot of significant projects that we felt... Um, were important, but we, we couldn't do those. So that will be placed on your agenda. Sometime in June, late June, we hope to have an opportunity to sit in front of you with, with a report or a work session of some sort to put it all on the table for you to see. That will begin the process then of you looking at realistically how do you take advantage of the increased revenue and then what's in the strategic capital fund. So we'll be talking about that in the next couple of months, but 
like you, I, I do see a need to, to make uh, recommendations to, to take uh, some of the dollars that we have to make the improvements that we've delayed over a period of time. And then where there are needs <clears throat> that we can't fulfill, like for instance lead, we've made exceptions and, and added people uh, at the health department. So all of that would be placed in front of you over the next several months. I don't want to put it on the table yet because we're not completely done with our analysis and all the information that will be shared with you, but it will be on your, on your table to take a look at. Can we just, he asked one point that I would like to circle back on, which is retiree health care. They, like, froze that in the mid-70s, right? Where we don't do retiree health care? No, we, we still have a, a small. Yeah, we, still have yeah, we contribute up to $300 a month for yeah, retiree do. health yeah, care. Okay. We um, up to $400 per, right. per month now. Yeah. Uh, but what he's talking about is that our liability, our post retirement liability, post employment retirement liability. Right. That's what he's talking about. We're okay. not fully funded. We have a plan to pay that down, but we're not complete. Not like our pension plan. Okay. Yes, Commissioner Morgan. Uh, I think that uh, in the first bullet point, uh, it kind of directs us uh, as far as a parameter, and then uh, I think as we we start our work sessions and stuff, we can kind of get into the nuts and bolts of it, but uh, I look at that first bullet point as a starting point. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Mark. Yes, but Commissioner Bukowski. Yeah, and, and um, since the administrator brought up lead, I mean, something like that where, and, and not to pick on the Sheriff's Department, um, just seeing who's here and armed. Anyways, no, um, that, you know, if you add two officers for road patrol to reduce response times, it would be hard to roll those positions back and say to the citizens, hey, you know, sorry, your response times are going up. However, in lead, we added two new folks. Lead should have a horizon. We, we should, we, we know where the issue is. We know the house is. We need to get that done and be done with lead. And, and there, then we say mm -hmm. to Adam, hey, cool, we gave you these extra positions. It's done. Now we're taking them back, and maybe they go to another department. So, so that's the, some of the intentionality that some of these issues are, you know, it's still going to take a number of years, but it won't take forever. And we're very clear that, hey, as the need goes down, these positions go, and they're kind of internally grant right. funded, so to speak. Yeah, we need to make, remain flexible for um, each year, depending upon the issues. If there are emerging issues, we need to deal with those. I think you're absolutely on point. At some point, it may be lead is over. We don't know what the next emerging issue could be PFAS. We don't know what the emerging issue will be. But um, I think you're right on point. Yes, Commissioner Voorhees. Thank you, Chair Jones. Um, so I was looking at some of my notes from boot camp uh, that we did earlier. Uh, when will we get a report of what all of the various um, increases or uh, money coming in? I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, uh, the land sale proceeds account, uh, these kind of things. When will we see those dollars, what the, what's being transferred in? That will all be priced in front of you. The, the budget schedule um, will begin um, towards the end of July. Um, we have budget presentations that will begin for the Finance Committee in September. But even before then, Commissioner, I think we'll have an opportunity to, to put some of that information in front of you, as, as I said earlier with regards to the Strategic Capital Fund and some of the projects, we'll probably have an opportunity to talk through some of that even before we get through the August, September time frame where we typically have the work sessions to, around the budget. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes.
That brings us to item number four from the prosecuting attorney. Wayman? Yes, this is a recommendation to the board to appropriate an additional $160,000 to the case management project in the 2019 capital improvement budget from the IT storage system replacement project in the 2019 CIP fund budget. The Board of Commissioners originally appropriated $315,000 to the CIP fund budget for the case management project via <coughs> Resolution 1129-1898 to track all cases electronically and to share all information related to these cases more accurately, efficient, efficiently, and timely. The budget estimate to complete the approved project has increased from three fifteen. $315,000 to 475000 due to adding software interfaces to legacy systems, court view, on base, and other court and police agency software systems. The legacy systems interfaces will significantly increase efficiencies between the prosecutor's office and county departments, courts, and police agencies, and reduce redundant data entry among county departments. It is recommended that the $160,000 be appropriated to the from the IT storage system replacement project in the 2019 CIP fund to the 2019 CIP fund budget to complete the case management project. So moved. Thank Support. you. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Questions, comments, and discussion. Yes, Commissioner Bukowski. Thank you, Chair. Just to be clear, that fourth bullet point um, could also read, um, uh, you know, from the um, IT storage replacement project, meaning that the IT storage replacement project will be reduced by 160000 So this is just moving dollars. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anyone else? Yes, Commissioner Wooden. Reading the, uh, the second bullet, um, the increased cost due to adding software interfaces to legacy systems. Can we get a little more explanation about how this wasn't accounted for at the front end? Um, sure. Uh, either the prosecutor or Cal Brinks from purchasing one of the two, or both. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Cal. Uh, as to answer your specific question is um, this went through a request for proposal process. So the prosecutor and purchasing in IT, we went through and did this. Original budget items included just the basic package to install at the prosecutor's office. As we were going through the request for proposals and interviewing the finalists, it became very, very relevant that this is a good business decision while we're touching it now to incorporate the interfaces. The efficiencies are just tremendous. And so although the original conservative installed the case management, this makes a good business sense to do the interfaces at this time. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Sparks. Is this a system that we own or are we renting this system? Well, currently now we do not own it. It is out of the prosecutor's office and the criminal side. Uh, there is some automation, there's some systems in there like OnBase, but this is a total integrated system designed specifically for the prosecutor's office um, to manage all their heavy caseload. So it's really a new system to them, replacing manual and some other systems that are in there. Mm -hmm. Yes, Commissioner Antwer. Good morning. I, I see. I, I know redundancy is not a good thing when you've got two different units doing the same thing over and over. But on the front end, um, what type of redundancy does this system have in case something goes wrong? Um, is okay. there, as far as safeguards, that we don't lose a lot of information? There are safeguards. We went through it quite extensively, um, and it is a cloud-based system. And part of the contract, uh, it was investigated as we went through the evaluation of the system. So um, Tim and the IT team has signed off it. There's significant redundancy on it. Thank you. Yep. Right. Anyone else? Hey, thank you, Cal. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. That brings us to item number five from the Sheriff's Office. Wayman? Yes, this is a request <coughs> to appropriate $331,000 from the Michigan Department of State Police to the fiscal year 2018 Sheriff Emergency Management Homeland Security Budget Special Projects Fund contingent upon award and execution of a contract. The Michigan Department of State Police Emergency Management Homeland Security Division provides federal pass-through funds for Homeland Security programs. The purpose of the fiscal year 2018 Homeland Security Grant Program is to prevent, deter, 
respond to and recover from incidents of national significance, including but not limited to threats and incidents of terrorism. Starting with the grant year 2006, the Homeland Security grant funding allotments were allocated on a regional basis. Kent County was placed into Region 6, which is a part of a 13-county region. The fiduciary for the grant since 2006 has been the West Michigan Shoreline Regional Development Commission. However, effective this year, the new fiduciary will be the West Michigan Regional Medical Control Consortium. As a result of the new fiduciary, the intergovernmental agreement between the new fiduciary and Kent County is in the process of being finalized. Therefore, approval of this action request is contingent upon corporate council review of the agreement and subsequent execution of the agreement. The grant period is September 1, 2018 through May 31, 2021. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a support? Okay, moved and supported. Questions, comments, and discussion? Yes, Commissioner Wooden. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, I have, I have two questions, if that's okay. Oh, yeah, you may have two. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, could we get a little more detail of what the, the role, uh, I can assume parts of it, but what the role of the Homeland Security Planner would be at the Sheriff's Department? Randy's here. Hi, Randy. Morning. Come on up. Good morning. Uh, the planner uh, basically prepares for emergencies. Uh, that's their full-time uh, function. Uh, as you know, we recently just brought back in-house our planner. Uh, she was contractual under Jack Stewart. Uh, she's now full-time, and uh, as you know, Lou Hunt is our new emergency manager. Um, very similar to what the person at the health department does. They're, they also have a full-time planner for emergencies. Um, so that's their role. And uh, my second question is related to the, uh, um, you know, the fact that this is flowing through the federal government and flowing through the Department of Homeland Security and in light of the sheriff's decision earlier this year to only honor specific ICE detainer holds with a warrant. Does this grant at all jeopardize that decision? Thank you. No. Not that I'm aware of. Um, this is through Homeland Security. Um, it's not through the... I don't see anything there. I only asked since it was under, uh, since ICE is under the Department of Homeland Security. So I just wanted to, to ask. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Voorhees. Thank you, Chair Jones. Um, I see under the 247,000 portion of this that uh, the 800 megahertz uh, program. Uh, are we, uh, is this in conjunction with, or is this separate from what's happening in our 911 uh, uh, entity, uh, and, and uh, or is this something separate for, for the uh, oh, this, sheriff's office? This is part and parcel of the 800 megahertz uh, um, upgrade that we're doing, the $20 million upgrade that we're doing. Uh, 58,000 of it is uh, to initialize and program all the radios. Um, that have been purchased, not just for the Sheriff's Department, but for all the police agencies, the EMS, the, um, uh, the fire, wherever we have radios going, they're gonna be initialized and programmed. Uh, and 40,000 is to upgrade the fiber optic for the PSAPs for Grand Rapids Dispatch Center and our Dispatch Center. Good news. Okay, anyone else? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, motion passes. That brings us to item six, fiscal services has a financial status report. Welcome fiscal services. Hello, Steve. Good morning, Commissioner. This is the first quarterly report for 2019. It is as of March 31st, 2019. Those of you that have seen me do this before know that I like to cover the revenues, then the expenses, and talk about what I see as the exceptions to what are being reported at this point. So if we can turn to page two, which is back of the cover sheet. The budget provides for a 2.5% increase over prior year actuals for revenues from 176.3 to 180.6. Year to date, 
expend our revenues are down 1.9 percent from 15.4 million to 15.1 million. Significant revenue variances, as I'll go down from top to bottom. Taxes have decreased from 1.8 million to 1.5 million, or 12.5 percent. This is just due to timing. We see this every year. Some years it's up, some years it's down. Going down, the charges for services have decreased from 5.3 million to 5.1 million, or 3.3 percent. This is primarily due to the timing of an accrual reversal that we had. Should have been done earlier, wasn't, just a timing issue. That accounted for about $170,000 of that difference, okay? Nothing to be concerned with. Investments, rents, and royalties, down the middle of that uh, left side, uh, have increased from 0.9 million to 1.2 million, or 21.2%. The primary reason for the increase is the improvement in investment income. It's up about 260000 which is consistent as we see interest rates rise. Any questions on the revenues? Okay, moving back to the expenditure side, the budget provides for a 5% increase over prior year actuals from about 172.6 to 181.2. Year to date, expenditures are up 8.7% from 35.1 million to, excuse me, 4%, I misspoke, 4% from uh, 35.1 million to 36.5 million. I like to look at the categories on the, on the left, top to bottom again. The wage category has increased from 14.4 million to 15.3 million or 6.7%. That's primarily how uh, CGI payroll system handles accruals. We weren't handling accruals monthly before. We are now, so that's increased it again. Nothing, nothing, it'll work itself out over the course of the year. Group insurance category increased from 2.4 million to 2.6 million, or 6.6%. Primary reason for this is due to an increase in group insurance rate, again, uh, not concerning group insurance for, for us has is, is been pretty much under control compared to other organizations. Again, nothing that concerns me at this point. The other services category, a little bit further down, just, uh, just from the top, two lines up from the bottom of expenditures. Uh, category charge uh, decreased from 7.4 million to 6.8 or 8.9%. Primary reason for the change is that we now account for indigent defense in a separate fund rather than in the general fund, and uh, uh, timing differential on the payment of inmate health care paid in different months just, just by timing. No big deal. Again, uh, that'll even out over the course of the year. The capital category has decreased from $0.9 million to $0.8 million. We're 10.8 percent. Primary reason for this is timing of equipment purchases. It switches from time to time. For instance, a couple of years ago, we had to push up the purchase of uh, vehicles for the share because there was a timing delay in getting them. So it's just a timing question. Again, we're consistent with our budget. I'm not expecting any surprises there. Any questions on the expenditures? Yeah, I'm going to take a little different track than I've done in the past with you folks. Um, if you remember in, in the budget boot camp, I talked about fund balance. And I talked about it was this simple. Every time you put a dollar of revenue in, fund balance increase. So in this case, since 1231-18, since you've increased fund balance $15 million, 15.1. But if you look down at total expenditures since the beginning of the year, you have spent $36.5 million. So, in fact, you're in a deficit position at this point in the year of $21.4 million. It happens every year. If you look last year, we were at $19.6 million deficit at this point in the year. Why? We don't collect a dollar of property tax until July 1 when it's levied. 
That's 55 cents on a dollar of your general fund revenue. So this is where we're at right now. We are in a deficit position. Do I expect to be at a deficit in the end of the year? No. It takes us time and works through the cycle. When we start collecting taxes in July and August and September, then we will return back to a positive position. For the year itself, I do expect it will end the year in the surplus position. If we can turn to pages four and five, page four, I'm not going to go over. That's the same information sliced and diced a different way. It talks about it on a functional basis. I always prefer to talk about it on the category of wages, et cetera, et cetera. But page five is fund balance. This here is, again, a statement that I think is misleading for you and probably shouldn't be in here, and I'll tell you why. It, at the top, says, as of March 31st, typically when you release financial statements, income statements, expense statements, and fund balance are all in sync. This fund balance statement is as of 12-31-17 and 12-31-18. 18, okay? So that's where you stood at that point in time. But as we know since that point in time, we've taken in some revenues and we've spent some expenditures or spent some of our additional costs. As I said on the other page, $21.4 million. So if I were to close the books right today and reflect that, you'd have to subtract $21.4 million from that 74.5. Fund balance as of March 31st is no better than 53.1%. And it actually is probably a little worse because I can't accrue revenues. Revenues to be accrued have to be measurable and available. Available has been generally accepted as 60 days. Well, there's no way we're collecting that revenue in the next 60 days. So I would have more expenditures to put in there, and I would expect that deficit position and your fund, fund balance to go down even more. Again, am I worried? No, because I know it's a cycle, and I know i got to get to the end of the year, and I know what I'm expecting for the end of the year. If you, don't have, any, if you have no questions on fund balance, I will turn. Commissioner Morgan. Just to put this in ambulance driver terms, uh, we have to go almost two quarters before we start collecting taxes. So we yeah. have to pay our bills. For we have to go a little over two quarters before we start collecting our primary revenue source. Yes, sir. And so having this fund balance, um, um, we can avoid um, having to offer tax notes to cover by having our cash flow, we needs. can avoid what some communities have to do, which are tax anticipation note, saying, hey, we know we don't collect our money for six months, seven months, eight months, so we'll go out and borrow to pay our bills, to meet payroll, to fund our money for the grants that we've accepted. And in that case, you'll be paying interest for that. And as I stated before, Steve, um, I think our employees appreciate the fact that we don't have to borrow money to make payroll. I've often said before this board, uh, do you really want to work for an employer that borrows your paycheck? I keep saying, I don't. I think, I think it's important to plan your cash flow. We do that. Commissioner Voorhees. One balance question. So I was just thinking here. I think this is the 30th year that I've been on a yearly budget. We had, uh, uh, what do we have, six of them at the city and six of them in Lansing, and, and uh, uh, so uh, 17 of them here. And fund balance, we talk about making sure we can cover our obligations, and the, the, the period of time that that's the toughest it's got to be just before we start taking in revenue from our property tax. And we, have, we send that out in 1st of July, and we collect that beginning, uh, usually the most of it, 1st of August, or does it? Um, August and September, yes. Sir. Yeah, August. So 
Our toughest time has got to be that, what, 30 days just before or, or, or 60 days? Uh, you know, sometimes we talk about uh, we want to stretch that over so many uh, months, uh, but really the pinch time in cash flow, what, what, is that, what is that number? Okay, we're going to cover that on the next page, okay? Okay. Oh, thank you. Any other questions in the fund balance part? Okay. Yes, Commissioner Antor, there's one. This one. Not a question, but a comment um, of an example of borrowing to pay uh, would be our Social Security checks that we all look forward to. I don't get one yet, but um, that money's pretty much gone, and we're borrowing, adding to our deficit to pay that because that was rated. And so that's the slippery slope once you start borrowing to pay um, because then all of a sudden you start justifying a lot of other things. So just a great example if people ever want to delve into Social Security and look where we're at. Go ahead, Commissioner Bukowski, you're next. Commissioner Bukowski. Yeah, well, I, I'd really like us, to, if we want to go there, I mean, the, the Social Security Trust Fund, um, and, and that's actually funded. The issue is we've been borrowing it for, you know, I, I bit my tongue earlier on the Homeland Security grant, you know, I mean, that's a pass through of federal dollars. How much of that is borrowed? You know, we have allegedly one of the best economies in our nation's history, depending on who you listen to, and we have a trillion dollar deficit this year at the federal level with a T, trillion. A few years ago, you know, we are arguing and one and again, both parties are 100% to blame. This is not a partisan comment. This is 100% to blame across the board. And so, you know, I don't know if we need to stop, you know, start a grassroots movement to say no to this stuff. Um, I, I don't know what we need to do because one day it's going to come due and we aren't going to be able to because the Social Security Trust Fund is filled with a bunch of IOUs. There is no cash in there. So when do we really get a comeuppance as a nation. And so again, we are 100% to blame, which means we all have 100% responsibility in this. So I don't know what our piece is. Do we just merrily keep accepting these federal grants? You know, I can't remember, you know, what it was in our audit, how much has a CFDR number on it and all that stuff. But it's still tens of millions of dollars. We happily accept, complain about Washington passing another deficit budget. You know, we have the headlines here with the, the NACO newspaper, a $2 trillion infrastructure program, which we sorely need, and we're going to put it on the nation's credit card. So, so anyways, somewhere, somehow, we've got to get serious. I'll jump off my van stand just a little bit. But before you say, do, are yeah. you going to run for federal office? No, Because that, no. that would fix it, right, Commissioner Bukowski? It we wouldn't need... fix it. No, no. I, actually, my fix would be to simply defund Washington and somehow take their authority but, away. But that's a different story and a different anyway, day and not for us Anyway, just something to give some today. thought to. Commissioner Thank Morgan. Um, I'd like to get back to our uh, <laughs> local. <laughs> it's, um, you took the words out of my mouth, Commissioner yeah, Morgan. It, uh, it's way too complex on a federal level for me, and I can't wrap my head around it. But um, so, Steve, our tax collection actually goes from July 1st to September 15th when they're due. So actually, we're well into the third quarter by the time we start receiving revenue. Yes, that's you will point. see that. You will start seeing that on the next page. Okay, okay. I was just trying to shore up. Okay, Commissioner Wooden. Turn to pages six and seven. Commissioner Wooden has a question. Go ahead, Commissioner Wooden. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in the same vein of continuing in our, our in, in our avenue of local government, I did after the budget boot camp do a little bit of comparison views, looking at different counties that have AAA bond ratings, CAFERS, and I tried to keep it to Michigan because we're complying with the same tax law. But one of the things I did see was that, you know, there's two other counties that had the AAA bond rating uh, beyond us, Oakland and Washtenaw, correct? correct. And uh, I saw that Washington, you know, the, the fund balance levels as a percentage of expenditures is a bit of a scatter plot. Oakland is a little bit above us, Washtenaw is a little bit below us. And uh, in fact, it almost, I could have read it wrong, but it, it appeared that while Washtenaw was increasing its fund balance, they actually had one of their bond rating agencies decrease their bond rating. 
And so I, all I'm asking is what is, how much of the fund balance is a portion of the calculus with determining AAA comparative to local economy, um, ability to collect revenue? Um, do we have a, a, a figure of that or is it more a, a best guess? Are we talking as is viewed by waiting agencies and our? Yes. Okay. If, if you look at the quantitative things that apply to Kent County, we don't have per capita income like other communities is high for other AAA. And there are a number of things quali quantitatively that we don't have the highest possible we could get. One of the things that Moody's discussed with us at the rating this year is how they view and they've changed how they view the rating process. When you look at the quantitative measure of Kent County, we come out a double A one, okay? It's the qualitative things that we have, okay? Strong financial management, strong financial policies. We adhere to them. Good liquidity, okay? And a strong fund balance. That's what pushes us back up to the triple A. Thank you. So the answer is very, very important. Yes. What? Very important. Yes. Put that in the very important category, Commissioner Wooden. Yes, Commissioner Morgan. I, I would just caution everybody. I, I don't look at Washington County as any kind of measuring stick to Kent County. So. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Steve. Okay, we'll go again to page six and seven. I apologize. Page six on the left talks about our cash. Let's focus on the bottom two lines of that. Total uh, available to meet cash flow requirement went up a little from 39.8 .9, million to 45.1 million. And if you look at the bottom line, cash reserves and expressed in days of coverage, we have about 57 days worth of coverage at this point in the year and it's went up to 63 days this year, okay? We spend on average for the general fund and the subsidized governmental funds about $717,000 a day times 365. Now, business-wise, we're spending more of that per day, okay? Uh, this situation will grow worse. When I come back at the end of the sex, second quarter, you will see less cash here, okay? Now, if we look at the page seven, we have a graphic representation of the same numbers that you see on the left, okay? Again, as I pointed out in Budget Boot Camp, what you see in the background, those shaded areas, are fund balance for 1231, 2018, and 17, okay? It is not where you stand today. It is our targets. It's where we want to be when we get to the full cycle. But if I were to draw a line there on fund balance, it would be down in the $53 million range. It would be done way down compared to what you're seeing right there. That is a target, not where we're at. Where we see the line graph, that is where we're at with cash position. And as you can see, it continues to go down to, oh, to about uh, the end of June, and then you start to see it climb a little bit in July. The tax bills go out July 1, so you start to see the climb, and then you see it go up quite, quite steeply in August and September, and then you see in October, November, December again, we're starting to spend more than we're pulling in because it's all pretty much collected because of the due date. Our some are going to delink with, or some will pay later, but the majority of the taxes come in in those three months. Hey, Commissioner Voorhees. Thank you, Chair Jones. Thank you, Chair Jones. I'm, so I'm looking at, from boot camp, um, the financial report, cash flow, and, and what I see there and, and on your report today. In February, we're carrying this great big fund balance from, um, yeah, from starting in December or first of the year because of that margin down below, because we get down close. But in the meantime, we have this gap on the, as, a, as we show the bottom blue line coming down, 
we got dollars sitting there. And, and with today's return on investments, which is uh, uh, better than it was a few months ago, but it's still not good, that, that's the dollars that I'm concerned about. Um, are we, because we don't want to spend a few dollars down here in June or July, have this 74 million point five, I think was uh, a million in the fund balance? How do we, how do we put those dollars to a better work than uh, waiting on the banks to uh, give us a better interest rate? Better work. I don't exactly understand your question. Do we have them invested? Yes. Are we making earnings on them? Yes. Do we know we're going to need them as we go forward? Yes. That's why we don't. That's why we don't throw all the money out at once. We know we're going to need it. We keep it fully invested each and every day, and then we draw down the money that we need. That's the best I can answer that question, as I understand it. Okay, hey, Commissioner Bukowski. Um, thank you, Steve. Just just to clarify something that I heard you say. Um, a moment or two ago, and you may have said it before, but it's the first time I've heard it, which, and I think it's significant, that just looking at that chart, the quantitative ebbs and flows of our cash, just our quantitative numbers, we're at a bond rating of two plus, correct? Yeah. And it's our policies and our adherence to our policies that people can really trust us that moves us to that triple A. So one of the myths that I hold is that there's pure magic in our cash flow that, that earns a triple A. And it's not pure magic in the cash flow. It's cash flow, which is significant. Again, we only have to go up a half a notch, not two or three notches. But our policies and our adherence to our policies are really significant oh, very very significant okay I can tell you just one policy that we had to break for a while uh, in 2010 2011 we couldn't put in the full uh, two tenths of a mil equivalent of two tenths of a mil into our capital policy they instantly wanted to know why what were we going to do about it were you letting your capital suffer they watched that very very carefully one thing that they like is that we are consistent. We come in and we say, okay. I mean, I had to go there in 2010 and say, you know, with natural growth or budget, we're going to have $10 million more in expenditure than we have in revenue. I said, but this board will work with us, and we will find a way to get that done until we have a balanced budget. They have come to believe that when we come in and say, okay, we're at point A here, and this is where we we'll think we'll be next year, this is what we're going to do, we update our policies, we follow our policies, the board's very strict on that. They like that. They weigh that very heavily. Uh, one thing that they will measure when I leave, they will look at your new fiscal services director, see, is he the kind of person or is she the kind of person that can come in and then lay out confidently where you're going to be and begin to sell that, yes, we, you still can be trusted. Kent County can be trusted to deliver. Commissioner Morgan. Yeah, Steve, not, just, this isn't done in a vacuum. Uh, when we started our fund balance policy years ago, that was a very important policy, and it was geared towards the the uh, rater, the rating agencies. Well, it was that, but it was also part of GASB 54 implementation. Okay, they changed the whole composition of what they called it, how you looked at the uh, fund balance. So we early implemented GASB 54. We brought it to the board. We said, this is what we think, from the administrative point of view, this is what we think makes sense. And this board adopted that policy, and we've adhered to it ever since. And we followed it, is what I'm saying. Absolutely. So uh, my point is, it, the rating agencies, they read, and they know. <laughs> it, I went through it. And they know, for example, that we're looking at what we're, what we're looking at bonding. They read the papers. They know. And when you go there, they want to know what's going on. And it was amazing to me um, how clued they, they were 
to the activities in Kent County. I'm sure they knew about what's circulating out there with all our bonding uh, requests that are that are coming down the pike. I, it's amazing, uh, you know, the due diligence they do when you go through that process. They knew about the hotels. So you have to press your button. No, I was just going to say that you're correct. They knew about the hotel, the requests related to uh, the uh, CAA. Commissioner Bukowski. Yeah, a question I wanted to, to ask last meeting and wasn't able to, and you just mentioned it. You know, you're leaving on December 31st, and you sounded confident that we'll have money on December 31st. My question is, will we have money on January 1 when you're gone? <laughs> Maybe a couple bucks. <laughs> I don't want to leave you too much. All right, thank you. That I know. I know. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Okay, anyone Any else? Questions? All right, thank you, Steve, right. for You're your welcome. informative report on the financial status. Now we'll go to Commissioner Miscellaneous. Is there any Commissioner Miscellaneous this morning? Commissioner Antwer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oops. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just, I think, um, Commissioner Bukowski, when we head over to Lansing to demand some reform, instead of taking a car, let's take a motor home, and when we're through there, we'll, we'll shoot over to Washington DC and we'll see what we can do over there too because I'm glad we agree in principle on some of these matters and uh, But these are things that there's so many examples of what not to do out there And we've always flown in the face of that the easiest thing to do is spend money Especially when you're not necessarily held accountable. So anyhow, that's it. Let's go to Washington Okay, Commissioner Bukowski. Yeah, just uh, um, my Apology for being late. I was at the Sheldon house um, breakfast um, it's the uh, mental health um, clubhouse down on Sheldon right next to Cherry Health, and it's part of Cherry Health. Um, there was almost a quorum there. Uh, Commissioner Melton was the host with Commissioner Stack, Commissioner Hennessy, and myself. So it's just an awesome program helping folks. You know, it, it you know, just aligns well with what Network 180 is doing and the mental health court, just a lot of good stuff. So um, I'm sure Commissioner Melton will say something on Thursday, so I'll end it there. Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just uh, a brief report on the airport. Uh, I kind of totaled up a summary. We have $53 million worth of projects ongoing at this point out at the airport. And if I can indulge uh, Pam, I do have a brief report I'd like to send out to the commissioners just outlining uh, about seven projects and where they are. Uh, along the timeline just to keep my colleagues informed what's going on at the fabulous Ford Airport We have a board meeting on Thursday, right? Yeah, okay send it, out there. send it out. All right. Anyone else? Commissioner miscellaneous this morning All right seeing none we are adjourned our next meeting date is June 4th County. I am Kent County. We are Kent County. We, we are Kent County. 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 Bayah, Kent, Kent County. Ami, Kent County. Somos Kent County.
Mas Ira, Kent County. We, we are, are Kent County. County. We, we are, are Kent, Kent County. County. We are Kent County. Oh yeah.